this view that governance is a, is a mutual thing. It's not just a delivery of services. And pro part of the problem in the early years of, of, of the, the millennium was that the focus was on what were called the, uh, the, the sort of financially driven services, computerizing tax licenses, car licenses, television licenses. Those were fairly routine. There was also a, a, a huge motivation for government to, to do those because it was bringing money in. So the, the cheaper you could make it to, to bring the money in, the more cost effective it was. What they found out in the middle part of the decade is once you get to what we call the emotional services, health, social security, all of those types of unemployment uh, benefit and support, that's where you're spending money and you're spending money in communities which often are, and, and people who are least likely to participate in the electronic services. So participation was, was important, also as it built up in the areas of democracy, and I'll, I'll return to sort of e-participation, e-petitions and e-democracy. Inclusiveness, everyone needs access to this. Uh, and the focus in, in many of the early years was on, therefore, everybody needs to have the competences to use computers. So inclusiveness became a technology mantra rather than a social mantra. How do we train old people? How do we train socially excluded groups? How do we give them access to the technologies? It, it, that changed uh, subtly over the years, and Marta, I think, has picked this up uh, in her presentation uh, earlier uh, th this morning, to a view that what are the services that people need and how should they be delivered, and I'll, I'll return to that. The third was organizational change. There's no point computerizing services that are inefficiently structured across power silos in government. Why should there be a Ministry of Education, a Ministry of Employment, a Ministry of Industry? Why should these silos, historical silos, still operate in the same way? So there was an emphasis on fundamentally changing the way in which governments uh, organizations behave. And the fourth area that was really uh, a high motivation for them was trust and trust and security. How do we actually encourage people those were the early years of cybercrime. Now that we're in full-blown cyber war uh, situations uh, with um, you know, daily attacks, yesterday the attack on, on the UN development programs website, mass organized hacking of, of uh, government sites and of commercial sites, we're, we're in a much more dangerous situation. By 2005, however, they'd started to set targets. 2005, it's a, it's a sort of, uh, it's coming to haunt them, I suppose. By 2010, all citizens, including socially disadvantaged groups, will have become major beneficiaries of e-government. And we'll see how this really hasn't been achieved in some of the metrics that I'll, I'll return to at the end. Uh, that by 2010, all European public administrations will have made information and services more easily accessible through innovative ICTs. Public trust will have increased, uh, and, and we, we end up with sort of risks of motherhood and apple pie types of statements as you start to hit those targets. But around 2007, they started to understand that this was really quite challenging that there was, from 2001, this idea that we could have a sort of seamless set of government services across Europe had become uh, an understanding that this was hugely expensive to do. And also, we didn't have the political framework to do it. Some governments have done. Uh, and we can talk about political systems, but Singapore, of course, has been one of the governments that has been held up of a government which has really driven forward in terms of electronic services and highly integrated ones. But, of course, the government has been a little more forceful in that. The Dubai government, when I talked to them some years ago, said, we have Project Zero. Project Zero is there will be no human interaction between citizens and government. It will be entirely electronic. So we don't charge them taxes, so they can't expect anything. It will all be electronic. I'm not sure that they're going to get there, but so you can understand how the political systems can actually drive the way in which the service models will develop. 2005, what led through 2007 to 2009 to an understanding that 
society is actually very complex, that this is about services for citizens, not citizens accessing centrally, uh, centrally designed services. So seamless e-government service now became much more driven by design for all, design services around the people that are needed it. And an example I'll give you is the post office. I don't know how emotional the post office is here, but in, in the UK, it's one of the great emotional ties. Uh, the post office and its privatization, the, the sort of gradual erosion of the, the universal service, the post, the, the letter that comes through the post, even though we're increasingly sending emails, has become one of the great fixations. And, and people argue that we need to have post offices. That's part of our community. Uh, old people go and collect their pensions from the post office and they have conversations. Well, in some ways they do. And actually one of the biggest innovations in my local post office where I live in Durham has been a cafe opening next to it because someone realized that these, uh, when people are queuing at 8.30, in winter and it's minus 20 in a howling gale on, a, on icy paths. This really isn't fun. So open a cafe. But other arguments say, can we redesign what that post office service is around the, around the citizens? Why don't we ask the people, what, what do you really want when you go for your pension? What happens? You know, what would you think if one of the, t the supermarkets like Tesco's ran a bus free around the estate, picked you up, took you up to Tesco's, gave you some free coffee, you could do your shopping, you could do some community actions. The bank would come and uh, a mobile bank could come. It would be nice and warm and then it would take you home. What would you think rather than standing out in February on, on, a, uh, on the pavement? And the response is that actually we don't want either or, we want both. In February we want the coach. In the summer we want to walk up and we want to have the community activity. It's much more complex when you hit emotional services. It is not that simple. Now we saw that in, in two other studies that we did uh, for, for the commission. One was on the organizational change. And as part of the organizational change, we, we, we started to ask the question, and how do citizens accept the, or the, the, the change that goes on in terms of service delivery? And we, we produced a paper called Trust and Transparency. We, we took a series of studies, the Edelman Trust Index, the uh, Economist's E-Readiness Index, a whole series of metrics, and unfortunately there wasn't enough data for Malta at that time. You can position yourself in this. And we did a, what in a sense was a sum of ranks against a series of, of correlations. So the lower your sum of ranks, the higher, you, the, what, the, higher the perceived trust relationship well, that they existed between citizens and government. Now, not surprisingly, the Scandinavians came out very strong. As we would expect, the Scandinavian social model has been very powerful over the years. And Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Finland come out in the top four. But when we were talking to the Finnish government as we built this model, they said, yeah, but we're really scared. This was about 2007. We're really, really, really scared. We don't know how we can sustain this model in the future. It's a high taxation model based upon a trust relationship with citizens. They trust us to spend this large amount of money wisely. But the labor market's shrinking and the aging population's increasing. That's going to destabilize it, quite independent of any other things. And they said, we have two problems which we cannot solve, alcoholism and suicide. We, you know, if we can find a, a way around that. So we have high trust societies with enormous rates of depression. Now, it's not simply saying it's because it's dark for six months of the year. There are, there are other things happening in that as well. 